a reminder, this is the Business Scholars Program, and we're just going to uh, talk about Business Scholars and all of the amazing opportunities that are available for our students today. So um, we can go ahead and get started. So first and foremost, what is Business Scholars? So we are an honors level cohort of high achieving, highly involved, uh, business minded students from all over the nation and even the globe. So we've got students that are from um, Russia, China, Brazil. Uh, we've got some really, really cool students. We've got an Olympic free skier. Uh, that is uh, in our program currently. We also have some phenomenal entrepreneurs, uh, including somebody who owns her own scrunchie restaurant, or not restaurant, uh, scrunchie company, and um, another student who owns a like baking subscribing com company as well. So we've got some really cool students from all over the place. Uh, really high caliber, so our average GPA is a 3.7, and our average ACT is a 27. Uh, we are holistic applications, though, so we encourage everyone to apply, but um, it does really show that just the level of commitment and uh, really hard work that our students have. So we're really proud of our business scholars and are so glad that we can provide these opportunities for them. So first and foremost, what happens for a business scholar? What are the benefits of being a business scholar? Uh, so number one is with a business scholars program, we're designed to spend the entire freshman year to help you figure out exactly what career path you wanna go on uh, when you go into the real world and really best prepare you for those opportunities. So we're helping you with professionalism, we're doing major exploration, so you get to kind of dip your toes into every little opportunity and every major that we have, so you can be like, oh, you know, I really enjoyed the finance portion of this, but I really didn't enjoy the accounting portion, so maybe I wanna go into finance rather than accounting. Or, you know, I thought that marketing was this, but it's actually this, so maybe there's a, a different career path that I'm interested in that I can work on. We do this through a very hands-on kind of experience. So instead of being like, okay, this week we're just gonna talk about information systems, you're gonna do a lecture, test, and move on. We actually kind of have um, this mixture of teaching you the information, and then you end up doing a presentation utilizing that information that you learn so that you can actually best apply it and actually see how it works in the real world. For example, instead of, you know, having a session for all nine majors every week uh, for your business scholars class, you'll actually have what we call cores. Uh, and so it's core topics that kind of explore a subject. And then we bring in the two majors that correlate with that topic. So for example, with mergers and acquisitions, you're going to learn a little bit about business administration and entrepreneurship along with financing, and then we'll actually give you a case study, is what we call it, and you get to pre, uh, pretend to be a chocolate company and uh, talk to the board of chocolate um, and essentially decide whether or not you're going to merge with a uh, portion of Nestle's portfolio. So you get to decide whether or not you wanna take on Nestle's portfolio based on the value that, um, that product brings to your company specifically or you and your group's company and uh, the valuation of it so we actually kind of mix a little bit of finance in there along with kind of running your own company so you know exactly what it means to do both of those things and then see how it applies to it and then learn how to be professional within that opportunity some other advantages about being a business scholar is once you're a business scholar, kind of always a business scholar, so it's the first year program, but you are uh, always a business scholar and you're essentially admitted into the business school your freshman year on. That's an honor that is not really available to a lot of students. Most students don't get admitted until going into their junior year. And so they only have a couple of semesters to really figure out exactly what they want, get all the classes that they need, and then go where with business scholars, you're in the uh, School of Business as a freshman, so you kind of have a little bit more time to explore your options, figure out what your major is, and then decide. 
It also gives you a lot more opportunities because you have access to classes that not everybody has access to because you're a business major. And then uh, you will actually kind of have uh, the ability to spread things out a little bit more and have more opportunities for internships, jobs, things like that. We also provide you, because you're a business uh, student at the David Eccles School of Business, with some phenomenal resources, such as personal academic advisors that follow you your entire college career. You actually get a business career coach, so somebody who helps you with finding those internships, finding those jobs, and really setting you up for success in the best ways possible, be it looking at your resume or helping you with a cover letter or an interview. Uh, they're all available to you because you're a part of the business school. The other advantages that you have as a business scholar is kind of in the classroom. So you as a business scholar get access to honors level business classes. This means that you're gonna have much smaller classes than the general population. Um, some of our business classes are as much as 200 students, uh, but it, the business scholars honors classes that you take are gonna be limited to 50 students or less. And then not only that, they're going to be taught by the top professors. So you're actually having the department heads or really the experts of these majors teaching you instead of just having a TA or somebody kind of helping you along. Uh, you're getting the experts to really focus on you and get to work with you one-on-one -on -one because of that small honors class. It doesn't necessarily mean that your classes are harder, it just gives you the ability to go a little bit more in depth because you have that one-on-one -on -one, uh, experience. And then of course all of this uh, kind of works up to getting you a business scholar certificate. So our students, our goal is for our students to graduate with a business scholar certificate, much like they would an honor certificate. So that's something that you can put on your resume. Uh, it shows up on your transcript. So when you go to grad school, it kind of shows that extra level of um, excellence. And so you really have some phenomenal opportunities by being a business scholar your entire college career. The other advantage that I think all the parents will love and then the students love as well is that there are scholarship opportunities for our students. So uh, based on your merit and your uh, GPA and your test scores, you actually have the opportunity for receiving, gosh, between 2000 and up to probably about $20,000 uh, your freshman year if you qualify for the scholarship. So it's a really great advantage for you financially, not only academically. Some other advantages that you have that are a little bit more on the soft skills side, um, instead of being directly associated with your academics, is that we get to do a lot with professional development. So in that Business 3995 class that you take with those cores, we also provide a lot of other opportunities for our students to gain those soft skills. So by doing the case studies and having you work in groups, you get to understand professional standards. So we hold you to professional standards with your dress for your presentation. So you do have to dress a business professional instead of business casual, So or business formal, I should say. Uh, so you do have to dress up a little bit, maybe wear a tie or a, you know, a nice blouse uh, in order to present yourself effectively. You do also have to learn how to communicate effectively and be a um, strong public speaker because that's something that's very important in the business world. And then we teach you other skills and help you, help you along with additional um, aspects like learning how to um, speak in a social setting properly. So we do a lot of fun events that I'll talk about in a little bit uh, in regards to additional professional standards. We also do a lot of company visits with our students for that class. So we'll actually take you on local company visits. Um, how many of you are excited about some of our business scholars experiences. So I'll talk about this, and this is a poll that we've got. Um, so we've got the three-day business trip that we do with our students. Uh, so those are company visits, uh, and we actually take you somewhere in the United States on a three-day all-inclusive trip where you get to meet with Fortune 500 companies. And then um, you also get to experience the culture of these different places. and uh, get to have a lot of fun socially too. So not only do we do the company visits and students get to um, kind of figure out exactly what they want to go into or what companies they want to work for and intern for, they also get that kind of inside scoop of what the, what the um, city is like too. 
And then of course we have uh, the Zion Leadership Retreat uh, for our students as well. So we actually take you on a trip to Zion National Resort and uh, have executives come and fly in and talk to our students as well. Um, it's not on the list, but we actually in the spring do this really cool project, which we call the Innovation Showcase. And, um, oh, that's a great question about the BA and the BS programs. So as a business student, we highly encourage doing the BS, the Bachelor of Science. For a business degree, a BA, it just kind of means that it takes a little bit more of a humanities perspective for some of those classes. So some of your requirements for a BA will be a little bit different than a BS. On average, our students do a Bachelor's of Science, though. That's a great question. And then for the Innovation Showcase, uh, their students actually get together in groups and then they kind of create a product based on their interests and their desires. And uh, they get to pitch it like on Shark Tank at the end of the semester. And we get to vote on who has the coolest idea and we bring in uh, investors to maybe even invest in your products. And some students have even launched companies based on uh, this innovation project. So that's a super cool experience that our students get to have. Um, and then for the other experiences that we have as well, let me just get over to it. We also in the spring do ski day. I see some of you are interested in ski day. It's a phenomenal day. Uh, we bring in somebody from Ski Utah and they actually um, come in and talk about how uh, Ski Utah and the marketing department works on getting people to come to Utah for our ski industry. And then we actually treat you to an entire day on the slopes uh, where we pay for your um, ski pass, we pay for your rentals if you need rentals, we pay for your meal plan uh, for that day. And so you get this whole day on us to go skiing. If you've never uh, skied before, you actually have the opportunity um, to essentially have a free ski pass, uh, but um, your friends can also help you kind of learn to ski a little bit because we've got some pretty uh, phenomenal skiers in the Business Scholars Program as well. Um, we've got another question that is wanting to know if you have to live on campus. That's a great question. You don't have to live on campus. It is highly encouraged though because it's gonna provide you with so many amazing opportunities. Living off campus means that you don't get access to things as easily. Like, you know, if there's an event on campus, you have to drive all the way out, find parking, figure out things out like that. But if you live on campus, and we actually have a really cool partnership this year with Lasan Studios, um, you're kind of right in the center of everything and have some phenomenal opportunities. I talked a little bit about Zion, so that's a three-day uh, leadership retreat where we fly in executives to come talk to you about leadership. Uh, it's phenomenal. The students love doing it. We do some hiking, so we pay for everybody to be able to go hiking for the afternoon. We do a dance party where we actually bring a DJ uh, out with us, and um, you get to have this super fun dance party with lights and like a fog machine and all of these cool things. Uh, our students even did a insane uh, game of Jenga while we were out there last year. So it's a super fun experience. And then of course, I think everybody's favorite, it looks like a lot of people are really excited about the international trips that are an optional uh, experience for students where we take you on an eight day trip somewhere around the globe so this past year we went to uh, Germany, we went to Israel and Jordan, we went to uh, the Czech Republic, and then uh, I actually had the honor of going to Hong Kong and Japan with our students. So we got to meet with AIG Insurance in uh, Japan, and we got to meet with the US Embassy in Japan, and a phenomenal venture capitalist, and actually the first venture capitalist in all of Hong Kong. Uh, while we went on our trip. And then we got to do super amazing things like eat authentic uh, food from Hong Kong and from Tokyo. And we got to do a robot dinner dance party thing. It was crazy. The students had a blast. Um, but the international trip is probably one of the coolest experiences that our students can go on uh, if, they're, uh, if they choose to go on that trip. And then of course we do the etiquette luncheon and this is something that a lot of people don't think of as being fun, but I actually really loved this experience. Um, maybe because I'm a foodie, 
but uh, we actually treat you to a four course meal at the um, Little America or the Grand America Hotel. And then our students learn how to uh, kind of present themselves properly in a social setting. So such as a business interview where you go out to lunch with your potential boss and you know you learn how to work with wait staff, how to excuse yourself on the table, uh, all while you get this phenomenal meal. And so we, last year we had chicken florentine and cheesecake and it was just the greatest. There's also some additional experiences that we're really excited about. Sorry, I've got so many things up, it's taken a little while. So we, of course, want to make sure that our students, all of our students get the best experience possible and really understand what's going on in today's business world and diversity and inclusion not only matters very much in the workforce, but it actually matters significantly uh, to the business school as well. So we want to make sure that all of our students um, kind of understand why diversity and inclusion is so valuable and um, why you should care. And so we have classes for gender inclusion, um, diversity, and really kind of making sure that students get those experiences. And we even do that in the Business 3995 class. So we do have one week where we do a diversity core. And then of course, uh, for all of our students, we have phenomenal opportunities for uh, underrepresented populations like first generation students, students that have financial needs uh, through our diversity outlet programs in our Office of Student Inclusion. We've got another wonderful question about how much tuition plus room and board is. We're gonna get to tuition pretty shortly. Um, for in-state students though, it's a little bit over uh, 1,300 or 13,000 for the whole year for a student. Um, taking 15 credit hours and then room and board varies so it can be anywhere from about 4,500 all the way up to uh, gosh 11,000 for a whole year so it really kind of depends on what your experiences are uh, and it varies significantly for our students. All right. So one thing that we're really, really excited about is um, this new specialized cohort that we have with our students. Uh, and so we have what's called the global cohort. Uh, and so this is brand new for all of you, uh, but instead of being the main business scholars cohort where you do major exploration, uh, it'll actually be its own specialized cohort that kind of does all of these cores through the global business lens. So for students who are interested in international business, maybe going into uh, law in some form for international law, things like that, this would be a really great opportunity or if they're just looking to travel abroad. So instead of doing the three day uh, nationwide trip, we'll do a uh, global trip from, uh, to London, and Paris over fall or spring break. So it's really, really phenomenal. Uh, and it's designed specifically for you. So you'll be the first class to enjoy it. Uh, the uh, one thing that we do wanna kind of point out is because it is an international experience, it's going to be a little bit more. Um, so it's 2,500 per semester, all inclusive. So that's like your plane uh, round trip to London and Paris and then your hotels and everything. But because we're going internationally, it costs a little bit more. And of course, you do have to have a passport and all of those things. Um, so it is an amazing opportunity, and we love our students to have that. And those of you that are interested and want more information, we'll definitely send you more info. And uh, all students will get a little bit more information about the specialized cohort throughout the year as well. So we're really excited to be sharing that with you. Some other exciting opportunities for our students are the Lassonde housing opportunities. So we talked about a little bit about housing and things like that. Um, so with Lassonde, we're actually partner, partnering with them. L the Lassonde 400 is a phenomenal opportunity. Lassonde Studios, if anybody's heard of Lassonde Entrepreneur Institute, it's actually designed, oh, great question. The cohort is only available to freshmen at this time. There's lots of other opportunities for um, going on international trips through Eccles Global, uh, which is a program that's available to all business students. So that's a great question. 
but um, the global cohort for business scholars is just going to be for freshmen starting this year. Great question. And then uh, with Lasan Studios, just to kind of get back into that, we are doing some really cool things with them. We're actually partnering with them and anybody who said, who's admitted to the Business Scholars Program and uh, enrolls with Business Scholars and applies to Lasan Studios before January 15th actually gets priority um, consideration for housing in Lasan Studios. So you can actually be on kind of the VIP list for Lasan, which is great because it's a phenomenal location. It's right in the center of campus. Uh, you'll kind of be in the middle of all of these different things that are happening. It's a phenomenal community where students can do just about anything together. So they have companies that are launched, students started their own like consulting firms, and it really allows students from all majors to mingle and kind of bring all of their ideas together and come up with some really cool things. So if you're interested in living in Lausanne, this is a phenomenal opportunity for you. And then we're actually working to help you find uh, your kind of perfect fit for a roommate. So we'll have like meet and greets for other business scholars where you and um, anybody else who's interested in living in Lausanne can kind of talk and mingle and get to find somebody that you might want to room with. So it makes the housing experience a little bit less scary as well. So we hope that you will uh, take advantage of Lausanne and all of the opportunities. Uh, great question, Burke. So uh, we've got uh, should we wait to apply to Lasan until after we know we're in business scholars? Not necessarily. The application to uh, apply for Lasan housing is open at this time. Uh, I recommend applying to Lasan now, uh, and then we actually, upon your admission, will send uh, Lasan a list saying, here are the students that we admitted into the business scholars program. Here are the students that are enrolling with business scholars. Uh, we want to make sure that they get these opportunities. And then we also have another question. Uh, thank you so much. Will the international cohort last the full four years? It's just like business scholars, so it's just that freshman year program. But again, every year uh, there's international opportunities through what's called Eccles Global, which has study abroad opportunities either in the summer or fall or spring um, for study abroad. And it's really nice because students can actually um, take these classes that are uh, counted at the University of Utah in the David Eccles School of Business while they're abroad. So a lot of students, when they go abroad, they actually don't even get the credit for going abroad. Uh, they just essentially get elective credit hours. And so they don't actually have credit go towards their major. With Eccles Global and all of the opportunities that are available to you after your freshman year, um, you have a lot of opportunities to kind of stay on track with your degree, which is really, really nice. The Eccles, uh, or the Global Cohort for Business Scholars will just kind of be a business scholars class that's designed to be through a specific lens. So it'll count as a business scholars class, not Eccles Global, if that makes sense. So hopefully that'll answer your question, but the business scholars global cohort is just one year and then the Eccles program is any time that you're at the business school. Oh, we got some other questions. Awesome. Uh, is business scholars part of the honors college or a separate thing? That's a great question. Um, so business scholars is separate. You can be in both programs though. So the honors college is kind of its own thing, uh, but students can apply to the honors college and to business scholars and uh, get access to honors level classes. So business scholars gives you honors level access to only business classes. The honors college gives you access to every honors class available at the University of Utah. One of the advantages of being a business scholar and in the honors college is that those business scholars honors courses that you take count towards your honors electives that you need to have for the Honors College. So they do work very closely together, but they are both separate. I hope that answers your question, Anna. And then is the Global Cohort all school year? Yes, it is all school year, um, but you'll only go on the trip either in the fall or the spring, uh, over fall or spring break. So 
Um, you will have all of your classes at the University of Utah um, while you're here, and then it'll just be that once a week seminar. But instead of going on the three day trip uh, from Thursday to Saturday, sometime during your fall semester, either during fall break or spring break, you'll go on an eight day trip to London and Paris. So it is a full year for the class, but the trip is only during either your fall or spring semester. Great question. Uh, we've got another question that is um, regarding the application. So the question is, can I use the same essay for business scholars application as for the Common App? I do know that they're very similar prompts. Uh, I would suggest maybe differentiating it a little bit. We do want to see something uh, along the lines. And as the person who actually reads all of your essays and makes the admissions decisions, I can kind of speak from this on a personal note. Um, that, and I'm just going to launch a poll here to see how many of you have applied to the U and then how many have applied to business scholars. Um, but I would recommend kind of applying uh, that essay in a different manner. So if you have a different experience um, that you can use, that would be beneficial, but it won't, it won't kind of be the end of the world if you use a similar prompt um, or a similar topic. Uh, but know that our essay is only about three to five paragraphs, uh, maybe a page for the entire essay, so it's a little bit different from the use application. Uh, it's great that um, y'all are going to be applying to business scholars. I'm really excited about that. Thanks for answering those polls. Um, for those of you, I know that we have a couple here who have already applied and um, we are very excited to have you and I've already read over your applications and we're very excited to give you your uh, responses in the future. Great question about um, housing with Lasan. So how much is housing? It ends up being uh, just about 10,000 for the entire year without scholarships. Uh, it might vary a little bit, um, but that should be a pretty good estimate for what it'll be. That's based on last year's cost, um, but it should be around that. So uh, housing with Lasan is around 10,000 for the entire year. And then let's move on to some other things. So um, for the next four years, just to kind of give you an idea of what that looks like, the freshman year, again, is you taking all of your business school prerequisites and your business scholar prerequisite classes, as well as the business 3995 class. So that's like the business scholars cohort class that you take. And that's all in your freshman year. After that, you get to take those kind of honors level business classes that you want uh, or that you want to take in order to kind of go towards your major. And we hope that you get to go on an international trip sometime between your sophomore and senior year. Uh, and then there's those specific courses that you would take um, every year in order to meet your major requirements uh, after that. And then of course, you will have the opportunities for internships, job offers, study abroad, all of that after your freshman year. So you're still a part of the Business Scholars program, but that Business Scholars experience in that class is just your freshman year. And then, great question. Uh, can you apply to the Business Scholars and Honors College with the same essay? Um, again, it is very similar. They might have some uh, specific requirements on length. We don't necessarily have specific requirements on length. All we ask is that you answer our essay prompt uh, fully. So uh, we have started reviewing applications. Some of those uh, essays are kind of missing the mark a little bit, uh, probably because they're utilizing uh, prompts from different essays as well. Uh, and so it's kind of hard to see how it ties into our prompt, which then again makes it a little bit more difficult to make a decision. I highly recommend following our prompt. If you happen to have an essay along those lines that kind of meets our requirement, that does meet our requirements, uh, you know, it is up to you. You get to make those decisions. All right. 
And we'll just kind of move on to cost of attendance. Uh, great question. We want to know what the acceptance rate was. Uh, and we're a little bit in limbo because we just switched over our application to be integrated with the Common App. Um, so that means that we are not sure how many students we're going to be uh, admitting. We do have maximum capacity for 500 students in the program, uh, and we are expecting a strong influx of applications. So we will have, and I'll talk about this in a little bit, um, a priority deadline by November 1st. So for our students who apply to business scholars and apply to the University of Utah before November 1st, uh, we will actually um, kind of prioritize your admission into the program. So it's a little bit more of a holistic opportunity, but then we'll have pretty strict um, requirements for students that apply afterwards, but it will be rolling admissions to business scholars afterwards. Uh, in the past, our acceptance rate has been just under 90%, uh, but that will probably vary significantly this year. And we're not entirely sure, which is new and exciting. Will being in the Business Scholars be more beneficial than the Honors College will be to getting a prestigious graduate, getting into a prestigious graduate college? Um, it's a little bit of a mix of both. If you are wanting to get specifically like a um, MBA and finance or something along those lines, Business Scholars will definitely be an advantage. If you're wanting to go to a very prestigious graduate college, I would suggest probably being in both. One of the advantages of being in the Honors College is that they train you very well for um, writing a thesis as a student, and that's something that's very important if you wanna to go to graduate school. So I would say the Honors College would be a very strong benefit, but if you're wanting to do business and going to graduate school, being involved in both is phenomenal, and it's a really smart move. And of course, being involved makes you stand out more as an applicant. So if you're involved in two things rather than one thing uh, and you're successful and working hard, that's really gonna show in your application when you go to graduate school. And it's awesome that you're thinking about that already. And then do we need to submit recommendation letters for the program? That's a great question. So you might be seeing in the Common App that um, you can submit recommendation letters. The University of Utah actually doesn't require recommendation letters and the Business Scholars Program doesn't require recommendation letters. So you do not need to submit any of those letters or anything like that for the University of Utah or for Business Scholars. So um, hopefully that takes a little bit of pressure off of your shoulders, uh, but if you still wanna make sure that we have a recommendation letter or if you're worried that your application might be lacking in some way and you want to make sure that you stand out, you can actually send me a recommendation letter personally um, to my email, which is emily.saunders at eccles.utah.edu. Um, and I'll put it in the chat bubble as well, just so you all have it. Um, but we can actually work with you and save that and add it to your application uh, if it ends up being uh, advantageous for your application and your admission. Uh, all right, how many students applied last year regarding the 500 cap? That's a great question. So last year we had a, uh, 750 applications in total uh, and we reached our uh, capacity of 500 students. So we actually had 495 students uh, in the program. So we reached full capacity last year, which we're very excited about. Uh, and then this year with the Common App, we know that uh, we're getting access, or the University of Utah had 34,000 um, 34, applicants last year. And with the Common App, we're expecting even more applicants. And for those of you that have already applied to the University of Utah, you can see that we're pretty, pretty much right there front and center in the business, or in the U application. So we're expecting a significant influx of applicants which is why we encourage you to apply before November 1st and kind of make those enrollment decisions early on rather than later because uh, once we reach 500 there's going to be a wait list and we can't really uh, move forward from there for you unless we have somebody who uh, changes their enrollment decision. So the earlier you apply and uh, are admitted and enroll in the Business Scholars Program the better for you. How many years has Business Scholars existed? That's a great question. Uh, we've been around for uh, 
just under 10 years. So we've been around since uh, 2011 and then we're going into 2020. So uh, we have been around for a, like nine-ish, nine and a half years uh, for the program and we've grown significantly. Our first class was 40 students and now we're just under 500 and next year we'll be 500. So we're really, really excited. Uh, about our growth and now we're working on making sure that uh, we get the highest caliber of students and really just a phenomenal group uh, that's well-rounded and holistic. Great question. What is the retention rate? That's a great question. So um, from for their freshman year, our retention rate last year was 93%. So we do pretty well. Um, again, Business Scholars is kind of designed to help you figure out what you want to go into. So we do have a couple kids that uh, decide, you know, I, I've been through this program. It was really, really beneficial from the professionalism side, but it did help me realize that I might want to go into something else. Uh, and so we've had a lot of students, uh, not a lot of students, we've had some students that um, will switch over to usually political sciences or um, like medical school for their uh, major after they participate in business scholars their freshman year. The downside to that is if you receive a scholarship from us, once you uh, decline being a business major, uh, you actually lose your scholarship opportunity. So that's kind of one of the um, disadvantages if you switch majors and, and decide not to participate in business scholars anymore is that if you get a scholarship, uh, that will no longer apply. But it's up to you and we want the best for what you want to go into. Great question. So to go on to cost of tuition, because I know that we had a couple questions about that. For the first year of college, and this is tuition and fees, uh, for in-state students that are taking 15 credit hours that are in the business scholars program, so that's including the business scholars class fees, everything, uh, it's 13 thousand five hundred approximately that's uh what the business or what the tuition calculator calculated for 2020 and for out-of-state students it's thirty two thousand one hundred just to kind of get a show of hands how many of you are in state versus out of state um the in-state students uh we can give up to i think it's about eight thousand dollars we're still finalizing our scholarship matrix uh, but the maximum scholarship should be $8,000 that stacks on top of any additional scholarships that you receive up to full tuition, unless you receive a full tuition scholarship. So that's kind of the only uh, thing that you wouldn't qualify for is if you get a full tuition, a full ride, um, then you already have everything paid for. So it, you don't get a refund on the business scholars one. It just kind of covers anything that hasn't, or anything that's not covered with scholarships up to $8,000, which is really, really great. For out-of-state students, your freshman year, we actually uh, up that ratio for you because we understand 32,000 is a lot more than uh, 13,000. So um, last year, our scholarships were 20,000 the, fr the first year, uh, and then it actually went down to $8,000 every year after that because the, uh, Utah is one of the few states that offers uh, gaining residency and getting resident in-state tuition after your freshman year. You do have to do some processes to do that, like establish um, a in-state residence. So uh, Lassonde is a great option for housing if you're looking to gain residency because you can actually stay over the summer through their summer program after your freshman year, and that helps a lot uh, with costs. And then um, for uh, years after that then the business scholars program regardless of whether or not you are a uh, or gain residency will go to that in-state scholarship amount so that 20,000 your freshman year maximum to 8,000 maximum uh, but it can vary anywhere from being admitted and not receiving a scholarship all the way up to those maximum amounts that I mentioned uh, for transfer students great question uh, there uh, able to get $1,000 in scholarships for the transfer program. That's essentially a fee waiver. So it really kind of helps out with um, that extra cost of college and being in the business scholars program. And then uh, does the University of Utah offer the WUI scholarship? We do offer the WUI scholarship. 
Uh, if you do receive WUI, you actually kind of rescind all of your other scholarships. So it is advantageous for you to decide whether or not WUI or your other scholarship options are the best choice for you. Uh, and if you have questions about that, you can always talk to us and we'll help you out. Um, so with WUI, like the business scholar scholarships don't actually apply. Uh, WUI takes over any other scholarships that you would receive, except for like external scholarships. So WUI is a huge advantage for out-of-state students on the West Coast, um, but make sure that you kind of figure out your full financial aid packages to understand uh, how to offset those costs and if WUI is truly the best option for you. All right. And then of course, how to offset your costs. So just to kind of give you a little bit more information uh, about, you know, we talked about those costs without any scholarship help. We wanna make sure that you get the most out of your opportunities. So applying early both to the U and to business scholars is incredibly beneficial for you. Again, if you apply before November 1st, those are scholarship deadlines. So um, business scholars, you get priority um, admission and we offer scholarships uh, upon admission. So you'll know your scholarship with business scholars uh, by November 8th, actually, if you apply before November 1st. So get your application in early. Uh, and then the University of Utah, I believe their scholarship deadline is actually November 1st. So you will be considered for scholarships um, up until November 1st for the U. Um, and then, you know, it's just smart to apply early because then you can kind of figure out, okay, what, what am I going to get? Um, and you should get that information for the University of Utah uh, after January 15th. From us, you'll know once we admit you. Uh, and our admissions process is uh, separate. So uh, if you're admitted to business scholars, you're not necessarily admitted to the University of Utah, but know that if you're a business scholar, you're admitted to the U. Uh, additionally, apply for other scholarships. External scholarships really, really add up. Uh, if you find $500 here and $500 there, that's, you know, that's $1,000 that you just got covered. Um, so really apply for scholarships and again, apply early and often to those scholarships. There's lots of opportunities. There's also uh, the free application for student aid, uh, for federal student aid. That's phenomenal and it helps students with figuring out grants, um, student loans, uh, additional opportunities, uh, and any other scholarships that they might qualify on a need-based uh, experience. So FAFSA, regardless of whether you think that you qualify for it, highly recommend filling it out and getting that taken care of. And then of course there's student loans. And again, with FAFSA, you can qualify for student loans and it really kind of makes that process a lot easier. I have federal student loans. A lot of people have federal student loans. Um, it's kind of nice to keep it all in one place rather than getting it through private loans, but it's totally up to you and your family. Uh, and then there's things called PLUS loans, and that's also something that you can get through FAFSA. Um, either your parents or yourself can get additional loans applied to your college experience as well. And then, of course, employment. Employment is always wonderful, so while you're um, at the U, you can actually have a lot of uh, on-campus jobs with business scholars after your freshman year. We actually have what's called the Eccles Ambassador position where you act as a mentor to current business scholars and you get to go on all of these trips and have all of this fun stuff. And actually we take them on a all-inclusive where we pay for it uh, trip to Peru or Guatemala and our students are currently in Peru right now. Um, and they get paid on top of it. So it's a pretty cool experience. Uh, and then there's lots of other employment opportunities for our students uh, to kind of help offset those costs. I know one student who literally went to college for free because he worked really hard and uh, he got tons of external scholarships and he worked with business scholars and did all of these different things to make sure that he could offset all of his costs. And he did, he, he went to college for free, which is phenomenal. Well, not for free, he worked for it, but you know. All right, so just to kind of go over the opportunities for scholarships, the University of Utah and the business school, specifically business scholars, 
we're going to do all we can to help you with um, your scholarshiping. So if you qualify for a scholarship, we're gonna give it to you. We're gonna make sure that you get that opportunity. Uh, just know that you do need to accept it. It is very important that you accept your scholarships because if you don't, then that money gets unclaimed and you won't receive it. So it's very important to accept your scholarships when you accept your enrollment with business scholars and the University of Utah. Um, FAFSA, again, go to studentaid.ed.gov. Uh, if you are prompted to pay for FAFSA, that is not accurate. It is the free application for federal student aid. So just remember that, go to studentaid.ed.gov if you're gonna do your FAFSA. And then of course, there's tons of outside sources for scholarships as well. One of my favorite is scholarshiplists.com. Um, Chegg is a really cool one, that's C-H-E-G-G. -G. That has a lot of outside scholarships. If you go to the business school website, uh, the David Eccles School of Business, eccles.utah.edu, uh, we actually have a link for any outside scholarship opportunities that our students can receive as well. So there's lots of scholarships that you can apply for. And again, they should be opening right about now, so apply early and apply often. Uh, and then, of course, the Business Career Services Center. So when you come to the University of Utah, there's uh, the Business Career Services Center, which is associated with the business school, and they provide resources for internship opportunities. Almost all of them are paid, um, part-time jobs, full-time jobs. They actually hire students uh, to work for them as ambassadors and liaisons. So they're a phenomenal resource for you once you actually come to the University of Utah. Uh, and helping you find your uh, job opportunities. And then some important information to remember just regarding scholarships and experiences. The deadline for scholarships for the University of Utah is November 1st, and then that's our priority deadline for admission, which means that if you uh, are admitted, you are have a higher chance of receiving a scholarship with us as well. Uh, if you do want to qualify for need-based scholarships, make sure that you include your social security number in the University of Utah Common App application. Uh, it'll help kind of alleviate that process and make it a little bit easier for you to get um, those need-based scholarships. Uh, FAFSA actually just opened, so you can start uh, FAFSA and your FAFSA applications. A lot of schools actually do kind of their own FAFSA experience. Uh, during the day and so feel free to reach out to your counselors or uh, just get your guardian to work with you on FAFSA and do that. Uh, you're going to want to create what's called an FSA ID when you start your FAFSA. If you don't, it makes the process a little bit harder to complete. So I just recommend getting that FSA ID uh, taken care of first and foremost and then making sure that you remember it and the password that you associate with it as well. That will make your process so much easier. Uh, and then uh, FAFSA may also still request verification information. So you might submit everything, think it's good, uh, but then they'll actually send you an email. Make sure that you check your email carefully and especially that it's the email that you want imp important information to go to. So don't use just some spam email for your FSA ID. It's really important that you get this information. So use a legitimate email. And then once you know uh, where you're going, confirm your intent to enroll. This reserves your scholarships. Uh, and so you accept your enrollment and then upon accepting your enrollment, you have the opportunity to accept your scholarships, do so. Um, that's gonna save your scholarships for you. Uh, we know that it takes a little while to figure out exactly where you wanna go to. Some colleges don't even let you know that you're admitted until March. And so, you know, take your time, figure out exactly what's the right school for you. But once you know, enroll and get involved. Um, it really, really helps save you some money and some pain. Um, does FAFSA need to be completed by November 1st? No, FAFSA doesn't need to be completed by November 1st. Uh, it usually needs to be completed no later than February, um, but the sooner you get it in, the better. Uh, I recommend trying to get it in before uh, January of 2020. That's a great question though. Um, and then, of course, there's lots of scholarships, so apply and do everything that you can. And then, um, just for our uh, understanding, 
we actually have a scholarship acceptance deadline of May 1st. So you have to accept your scholarship by May 1st in order to receive it. If you don't accept it by then, then it's unfortunately out of your hands and it's gonna be applied to somebody else. So um, just kind of remember that opportunity as well. So with your enrollment, you can accept your scholarship with us, but the deadline is May 1st for enrollment and scholarship deadlines with us. General admissions info, we kind of went over all of this, but if you haven't completed your University of Utah application, let's go, go ahead and complete it through the Common app. It's really easy to do so. You just go to the link that I put in the um, chat box, uh, and in there will actually be a section that says, you pick your colleges that you're interested in applying to, and then um, it'll ask you questions. It'll say questions on the tab, and then we're actually one of those tabs underneath that. And that's how you uh, complete the Business Scholars essay, and you just upload an essay. All the other information will come through your University of Utah application, so once you get your official transcripts and test scores submitted, and then we see that essay come through, um, we will review your application. So we do have applications right now that are incomplete, uh, and it's because the uh, GPA or your transcripts and your test scores haven't come through from your high school. So make sure that your high school is getting those uh, in, or if you have access to them, making sure that those get into the Common App as well. Uh, and then we will review those and your essay and make admissions decisions. Uh, again, with the priority deadline by November 1st. So if you can get your application in before November 1st, do so. It's highly beneficial to you. Uh, and then if you apply by November 1st, you'll actually know with us by November 8th at the very latest that you're admitted and what your full scholarship amount is as well. So it's again a huge advantage if you apply before November 1st because you can maximize on your admission and your scholarship opportunities. And then of course, again, you're gonna want to make sure that you uh, enroll and accept your scholarships before the May 1st deadline. Uh, one of the other advantages is if you enroll with Business Scholars by January 15th, that's the Lassonde uh, housing priority date as well, you're getting into that priority list for Lassonde too. So um, just make sure that if you think that the U and Business Scholars is exactly what you want, uh, you go ahead and enroll and save your spot because again, we're maximum capacity at 500. So once those seats are, are filled, we will have a wait list and just kind of be admitting students uh, from there based on that wait list. So the earlier you enroll, the better opportunities for you as well. And now it's question time. So if you have additional questions, feel free to ask them now. I'm happy to answer them if you um, wanted to talk about more questions or, or more opportunities, feel free to add them in the chat or in the um, Q&A bubble and then we will finish up if that's okay. My email, great question. So I'm gonna put it in uh, the chat box, but it is emily.saunders at eccles.utah.edu. If I am at all ever out of the office, um, you can also email business scholars at utah.edu. And that goes to our general uh, email account. So that either myself or one of my coworkers will be able to answer any questions you have or get you taken care of. Uh, great question and glad that you asked it because I can help you out with a lot of additional questions you have or if you wanna set up anything uh, additionally like a tour or something along those lines, always happy to help. Uh, if you retake, retake the ACT, can you update your score after the priority deadline? To my knowledge, you can, but you have to apply before the priority deadline in order to have those updates considered. Um, so that's kind of an important aspect is, you know, uh, the U updates your ACT and your SAT scores as they come in, um, but 
you do have to apply before the deadline in order to kind of get those um, to, to get those even considered. Uh, but with us, we will look at your updated scores if you apply before November 1st as well. So that's again, one of the advantages of applying early. Great questions. Uh, can you apply to business scholars through the Common App? So that is how the application works for us now. So we're fully integrated with the uh, Common App with the U. So if you haven't applied to the U or business scholars yet, go ahead and log into the Common App and create your own account and then select the University of Utah um, as one of your colleges and we will be part of that application process. If you have already applied to the University of Utah and didn't know about business scholars before submitting, that's totally fine. We do actually have a back door for you. And I will just uh, highlight this again. It's filling out a form and essentially just kind of giving us your uh, contact information so we can match you with your app, University of Utah application. And then we upload that essay in uh, manually for you. So it ends up being easy for you if you've already applied and didn't know about business scholars beforehand. So I'll just put that link in there again. And then what does the business scholars take most into consideration in a student's application? Great question, Anthony. Um, so it's a holistic application. We want to really get the students that we feel are um, driven and passionate about business. That essay really helps out with that experience. So, you know, us understanding that you're willing to learn and willing to kind of change your mindset uh, and uh, understand a, a new perspective and and really facilitate and discern for yourself um, and that essay prompt that we have which is describe a prolific event in your life that helped you kind of change your opinion um, or helped kind of change your perspective uh, really helps us figure that out Additionally, GPA and test scores are strongly considered as well. Uh, you are scholarshiped solely based on your GPA and your uh, test scores. So uh, if you meet merit requirements of your GPA and your test scores, you will get a scholarship. You don't necessarily have to be uh, meet those requirements in order to be admitted into the program. I would say that if you have uh, at least a 3.5 uh, or higher and a 25 or higher, you are an incredibly strong applicant uh, for being admitted into the program, especially if you apply before November 1st. And then additionally, if you are still kind of wavy on that, uh, and might you know have a lower GPA with a higher ACT score, uh, still apply because then we'll take everything into full account, especially because you applied before the November 1st deadline. So we're really, really looking at those students who apply before November 1st and just seeing uh, if they're a great fit and if the program would benefit them. So great question. Any other questions that I can answer for you and help out with? Again, well, yeah, absolutely. Just let me know what your question is and we are happy to answer them. And again, if you have a question, somebody else probably has the same question too. So. Um, it always helps to ask and then you'll have an answer and it'll be much smoother for you in the, in the long run. And if you just want to um, ask that question in the Q&A section or in the uh, chat, we can help out. If you do grade replacements through your high school, can you upgrade your transcripts after the priority deadline? Um, to, that's a great question. To my knowledge, that is the case, um, but you have to, again, apply before the priority deadline. I'm not entirely certain about uh, that 
uh, through the University of Utah with business scholars. I know that before the priority deadline, we did kind of take any sort of updates into consideration for scholarship opportunities if it helped you with qualifying for, for more scholarships. So um, if you have an update, let us know. Um, and it always helps to submit it because the, the most update the most updated information is going to be the best information. So if you have grade replacements, let us know and get them into the uh, central application process as well. All right, so we've got another question. Is the $1,000 scholarship for transfers the only one transfers get? Um, that is the only one that the business scholar offers for the transfer program specifically. Um, if you apply to external scholarships, it stacks on top of anything else. So any scholarships that you receive uh, through the U or through the business school additionally will stack on top of that as well. But the uh, $1,000 scholarship is all that is offered for the transfer program specifically. Great question. And then... How many credit hours are required to stay in the, that's a great question. Um, so in order to be in the business scholars program and be a part of the business scholars program, you do need to be a full-time student, which means 12 or more credit hours. If you have a scholarship, there is uh, a little bit more of a requirement and you are required to be a 15 credit hour student. Um, that, in my personal opinion, is actually a better opportunity because 15 credit hours uh, is pretty similar to the workload that you have in high school. So a lot of students who um, start their freshman year off with 12 credit hours end up finding that they have a harder time adjusting to college because it's so wonky with the scheduling um, that they just don't feel like that they can keep up properly. Where with 15 credit hours, it's just kind of the right amount of pacing and everything to really help a student kind of transition well from uh, their first year or from high school to their first year of college. So having 15 credit hours is highly recommended to be a business scholar um, and it's required for the um, scholarships, uh, but 12 credit hours is required for the business scholars cohort to be in the cohort. Um, so if you have 12 credit hours, you can be a business scholar regardless of whether it's the main cohort or the global cohort. So uh, as long as you are a full-time student, you can participate. Do we use weighted or un-GPA or unweighted GPAs? Great question, Nick. Uh, we use unweighted specifically, and most colleges use unweighted GPAs for your general admissions process, just to kind of give you an idea of because it, it ends up being fair because a lot of students might not have access to AP classes or honors classes at their schools. Uh, and so in order to be admitted, unweighted GPAs are typically the standard for uh, in application processes. The weighted GPAs end up helping with uh, kind of additional credits and um, experiences that you might receive otherwise. So, you know, uh, if you end up coming in with lots more AP credits, that might be considered in your weighted. Um, but unweighted is for general applications. And for business scholars, it, we go by unweighted as well. If you're admitted to business scholars, are you automatically admitted to your major? Great question. So if you're admitted to business scholars, you're admitted to the David Eccles School of Business as what's called a pre-business major or pre-business administration. So everybody's kind of started out as a business admin major uh, until they fulfill all of their prerequisites that are required for the business school. After that, the nice thing about being a business scholar is literally you just declare whatever major that you want. So um, usually uh, sometime in your sophomore year, a lot of uh, our students will decide their major, at least their top three uh, choices for their major and then um, start going down that path. With most students, they actually have to apply to the business school, take those prerequisite courses that they need, and then apply for their major. As a business scholar, you've essentially done that by participating in the business scholars program. Um, so you just have to fill out a form saying, this is the major that I want. Uh, and they work you into that as long as you're in good standing with the business school and the business scholars program, which is a 3.2 or higher GPA. 
for future reference. And great question. If you're taking concurrent classes for business, will they transfer? Um, so earlier I mentioned that you're going to have your own academic advisor that follows you your entire college career. Um, they will work with you when you come for new student orientation uh, to help you figure out exactly what your classes transfer as. Um, so when you come for new student orientation over the summer, you will meet with an academic advisor while you're kind of setting up your classes and you can set up personalized meetings afterwards but we do have um, the new student orientation where you sign up for classes and academic advisors are there to help you figure out exactly what classes you need um, and then with those concurrent enrollment classes uh, your academic advisor will be able to tell you okay this counts at, as this class so you don't need to take this um, or this counts as this, you don't need to take this. It only counts as elective credit hours, so you'll still need to take these classes, um, but you graduate with a little bit more credit hours. So it does vary, but you will have somebody personally assigned to you to help you figure that out when you're a business, at the business school and a business scholar. So great question about concurrent classes. That also applies for any other classes that you take. So if you have like an AP, English course or you know AP Calc or something like that that might actually count uh, towards college credit so really consider those AP classes and those concurrent enrollment classes they help kind of set you ahead and get you prepped um, typical class size great question with business scholars so your business scholars 3995 seminar class that's going to be no more than 55 people in it in total um, we can't do more than 55 at all um, it, per class because then we can't uh, take care of you and support you in the way that uh, we want to make sure that you're supported for business scholars. Um, any honors level business class that you take is pretty much going to be under the same boat. Most of those classes are, you know, 25 students or so, maybe even less. Uh, it depends your freshman year those classes are going to be like 25 students or less for the um, honors business scholars classes that you take um, General classes they can be anywhere upwards to 200 so you know it really does vary between The general classes that you'll need to take and the business scholar specific classes that you'll take so like the general B core prerequisite which is the business core prerequisite class is 200 students and then that's broken down into discussion classes that are much sm smaller um, but it does vary greatly great question can I major in economics which is in the College of Social Sciences and still be a business scholar great question uh, Yasmin it uh, we actually have something called Cuomo which is essentially business econ uh, and so that is a phenomenal major that you should definitely look into. It's the quantitative analysis of markets and organization. So it essentially teaches and literally the professor who wrote the economics textbook is the Cuomo professor. So uh, Scott uh, Schaefer, he, um, is it Scott Schaefer? Yes, yes. Um, he actually wrote the textbook for economics and was in Stanford. He's done insane things with economics and now he's our Cuomo department head. So he runs the major for Cuomo. Again, it's quantitative analysis for markets and organizations uh, and that you can definitely be a business scholar with. With economics for the College of Social Sciences, um, you cannot technically be a business scholar and be in another college. You do have to be a business major or minor to participate in business scholars. You have to be a business major to get scholarships for business scholars. So just to kind of give you a little bit of a heads up on that. Great question. Do I know anything about the learning support offered? There's lots of learning support offered. So again, we have uh, the Business Career Services Center. Uh, we actually have a tutoring center for business for the business school that's free tutoring for all of our students for every single business class. Uh, I know that there's lots of support um, in the Office of Student Inclusion, making sure that students have all of the resources they need and, and the social support because, you know, learning 
uh, a big portion of it is social. So like making sure that students really have great mentors. We actually, the Business Scholars Program has TAs for the class as well to help you with any questions you have or making sure that you're prepared for what you need. So there's lots of opportunities for learning support uh, and we're happy to help you find those as well. Great questions. Any other questions that I can answer for you? Throw them at me. 